After the discussion on uh, TDO Clinical uh, about training, uh, I thought I'd uh, make another video just to emphasize maybe some of the same uh, important points. Uh, so this is these are basically the common errors I've observed uh, in endodontist training their staff uh, over the last 30 years. They're fairly standard. The first error is a failure to explain how the process will work right at the beginning, before you even start training. Sit your p team down and explain how the process is going to work and that they're going to be guided through this. So this is an incremental sequential process where you will learn one skill at a time, you will practice it thousands of times over and over again until you don't even have to think about it. The second error is to is to failure to focus on only one skill at a time. Mastery occurs by mastering one skill at a time and every complex skill can be broken down into simple small steps. So your job is to break everything down into simple steps. Step one, two, three, four, five, however many steps and learn one skill at a time. Master one skill at a time before going on to the next skill. And you'll find that mastery will be easily achievable. If you try it, you'll fumble with it initially here to begin with. That's it. I want you to watch Joy do this again. See if you can pick anything up. Little finger, step one. Little finger, step two, grab. Step three, place. Step four, move. Okay, one more time. Step one, touch. Step two, grab. Step three, place. Step four, Exit. Step one, touch. Step two, grab. Step three, place. Step four, exit. Another common error is a failure to practice blindfolded. This is so important because this is assisting is not really a visual skill. It's a tactile skill. And Let's see if you can do it blindfolded. Close your eyes. Okay. Go. Okay, again. Good. We've done, we do this with every trainee. This is Ingrid blindfolded. And you can see how it accentuates the senses. Focus is tremendously improved on what the tactile skill is as you do this. So practicing blindfolded is very, very important, both as the doctor and the assistant. So uh, another error is a failure to have the assistant practice as the doctor. Uh, we have a saying, where you stand depends upon where you sit. So having the assistant practice as the doctor changes the entire perspective of the assistant. And now the assistant knows what the doctor is experiencing and can be a much, much better assistant. I don't know why endodontists don't do this. Um, it is one of the most important and ground changing things that you can do is sit the assistant down and have them feel what you feel. And when they do that, they will be able to really help you m much more because they have that perspective on how it should feel. And also have the assistant practices the doctor blindfolded so their senses are really accentuated on, on uh, how, the, how the instrument switches should be. Uh, we've done this with uh, every assistant and almost immediately after this is done, 
the level of assisting goes up dramatically. It's a mystery to me why more doctors don't do this. It pays such huge dividends and uh, it brings the team together as well because you you have the assistant has the doctor's perspective on what is is being felt with the instrument change. Notice Ingrid, how, how she's focusing. It really directs the focus just tremendously. Here you can see Vanessa practicing as the doctor with her eyes closed. Again, this is so important and it's almost never done. I, and I don't understand why. We've done this our whole careers and it, it, it's one of the keys really to mastery. And obviously the last one is a failure to review videos together as a team. Uh, actually, this is how we uncovered a lot of these special skills was in, in videotaping ourselves and then sitting down together as a team and seeing, seeing if we could help each other. For example, Joy really solved the chicken wing problem. So we're doing this and I'm, we're looking at the chicken wing. It becomes immediately obvious. And Joy said, you know, you can do this, turn the, turn the patient and keep your head down. So uh, the solution to these problems uh, is evident when you do that. So in slow motion, this is us uh, early, many years earlier videotaping ourselves and if you learn a little video skills and slow things down you can really detect a lot of errors. Here you can see a very poor instrument pass and as you review this with your staff and critique each other um, you'll just get better and better. And one final comment on training schedules. It, it isn't how long you train, it's, it's how often you train. So you don't have to spend a lot of time on this. It's the frequency of the training, not the total time spent. So if you just spend 15 minutes four times a day, that is usually sufficient. So I hope this helps uh, in uh, understanding some of the common errors in, that are